Hey there, this is the Small Fish Big Pod, the entrepreneurship podcast for the gallus few who dream and do. If you're a small biz owner, a creative freelancer, or someone dreaming of leaving your nine to five, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Rhiannon Loudon, proud female founder, mum, and small biz champion. I was born and bred in Winnipeg, Canada, and currently live over in Glasgow, Scotland, where I run two small businesses, Rhiannon Neal Photography and Small Fish Brand Co. I started Small Fish Big Pod as a way of connecting the small business community, providing a platform where we can share open and honest stories, ideas, advice, and tips about running a small business. And now on to this week's episode. Thanks for tuning in. Hello and welcome back to Small Fish Big Pod. If you are joining us for the first time, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have listened before, thank you for coming back. Um, this is part one of a four-part mini-series all about motherhood, pregnancy, and entrepreneurship. What happens when the three collide? Um, For those of you who don't know, I am currently, at the time of recording this, just about nine months pregnant with baby number two. Um, It's the end of September 2021. And if you have been following me on Instagram or following my business journey, you'll know that um, this is something I talk a lot about juggling a business and parenthood um, and everything that comes along with it. And pregnancy has certainly added another dimension to that. Um, So the last four, four or five months for me have been my busiest ever in business. I have been full-time self-employed for four years, um, but uh, have been running my businesses um, or working as a freelancer anyway, at least part-time for 12 or 13 years now. So I have been in the self-employment game for quite some time um, and the last four months have been the busiest ever. Um, Both of my businesses have grown exponentially, which is great. I'm really excited about it. Um, And with the easing of restrictions um, to do with the pandemic and lockdowns ending, I sort of had almost a year's worth of work kind of crammed into the same three or four months all while also fighting through my second and third trimester of pregnancy. So uh, to say it's been a challenging few months would be a bit of an understatement. Um, And that is where the inspiration for this mini series all started. Really excited to be back with the podcast though. It has just been far too busy with client work the past few months to uh, be able to stay on top of the podcast as well but things are slowly winding down a little bit still have lots of stuff to finish up before I officially go on mat leave but um, with all of this stuff so top of mind right now it seemed like the perfect time to finally put my thoughts together for this mini series so like I said this is part one of a four-part mini series all about motherhood and entrepreneurship and I thought it only made sense to start by talking about the pregnancy side of things. So for some they might be thinking about starting a family or it's something that they know that they want in the future and um, for others they may already be pregnant or um, trying maybe for a second or third or even fourth baby. Um, for myself like I said I'm nine months into this pregnancy so pretty much ready to pop. Uh, This is baby number two for us. I have an older daughter called Charlie, who's four, and um, I was self-employed when I was pregnant with her, but I was very much in the startup phase of uh, my Rihanna Neal business, my wedding and family photography business. Um, I had yet to start Small Fish Brand Co. at that point, and um, things were definitely different with the first pregnancy. I did not have uh an existing child to keep busy i did have our dog dexter he's still around as well um but it's definitely been more challenging this time as um i also have charlie to think about i have a second business this time that i'm running and like i said uh, both businesses are have grown a lot and uh are taking up a lot more time these days than they were when i was pregnant with charlie so starting from, I guess, the decision to um, to have a baby, whether, like I said, whether it's your first baby and you're starting a family or whether you're wanting to grow your family, it's a different 
set of things to think about when you're self-employed. So if you work in a sort of regular nine to five type job or um, a sort of more traditional career field, you know that you will have a maternity leave, you will maybe have somebody cover for you while you're away, you will have a job to go back to. It's a little bit more straightforward in terms of maternity pay and things like that. When you're self-employed, uh, it's a very different story. I think it adds another sort of level of things to think about when you're self-employed because it's not so straightforward, especially if you're a solopreneur, if you run your business yourself. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of questions that you have to ask yourself um, about how you are logistically even going to manage taking a maternity leave who is going to run your business while you're away? Um, who is going to do your marketing? Who's going to answer messages? How long can you really afford to take a break? Can you just disappear? Will you have a business to go back to? These are all things that um, have run through my head both times, even though I've done this before. Um, and in speaking to lots of other mums and mums-to-be and women in business, I know that um, these are kind of top of mind questions. Everything is figure outable. I totally believe that and it's true, but it um, it does add a little bit of extra stress and makes it a little bit more challenging when you are trying to plan for a family or a new baby and you are self-employed. So let's start with the big one, planning for a maternity leave. So you probably have an idea in your head of when you would like to finish up work and start your leave. For some people that might be a few weeks ahead of their due date to give themselves a little bit of time to unwind and prepare for the baby coming. For others, they might want to work right up until the last moment and whether that's to keep themselves busy or to maximize their time after the baby comes. Different things are going to work for different people. And um, personally for me last time and this time again, I plan to work as long as I possibly could before the baby came, partly because I'm someone who likes to be kept busy and admittedly um, I'm not great at taking a break and taking a rest. But um, for me, I think keeping myself busy and also having as much time as possible after the baby arrives rather than before um, just works a little bit better for me. However, there are a few things to think about here. So um, depending on what your job is, my job can be quite physical and um, the sort of brand and content strategy side of things, obviously not so much. That can all be done in meetings and at a desk, but the photography side of things can be quite physical. If I am out doing a brand shoot, I am often scrambling over rocks or <laughs> out on quite a long hike or, um, you know, standing up on chairs or lying down on the floor. It can be quite physical. If I'm shooting weddings, especially um, a full day wedding can be 11 or 12 hours on your feet carrying heavy equipment. And you just never know how your body's going to react to a pregnancy. So my first pregnancy, I managed to work right up until the end. I think I shot my last wedding at 38 weeks, but I actually did a newborn training workshop uh, two days before my due date. So I did manage to work right until the end, though I definitely remember finding it quite challenging. This time I developed SPD, pelvic girdle pain. Um, there's a few different names for it, but basically uh, from a physical standpoint, I am still working. I'm at 37 weeks as of tomorrow from the time this podcast airs and I am still out working, but I cannot do the 11 or 12 hour days. And I have brought on another photographer to work as a sort of associate alongside me. Um, to kind of ease the workload a little bit, help make my days a little bit shorter and to cover um, some of the bigger kind of full day weddings that physically uh, are just a little bit too challenging. So you might think that you will manage to work right until the end just as you have been and you might need to adapt your plan. I think what I learned last time and planned for a little bit better this time is that these things can happen and I basically had a backup in place. I spoke to some colleagues ahead of time and lined them up so that I knew that no matter what happened, whether I just needed help on the day or I needed someone to cover completely for me, I had somebody in place. That was a great extra peace of mind um, both for myself and for my clients because they knew I was uh, preparing for sort of every possible scenario. From a financial standpoint, obviously that is an extra cost for my business and less profit for me, um, but it's a sort of 
balancing act, I suppose, and um, worth its weight in gold because the colleagues that I had helping me um, have been invaluable. And just, again, that extra kind of level of reassurance that no matter what happens, none of my clients are being let down. Another thing to keep in mind here is um, staying on top of your workload. So obviously the pandemic has made things a little bit more challenging this year. So my workload is has been the last three to four months about three times what I would normally do in a month, which is a bit crazy when I think about it. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I expected to stay on top of it all myself, but uh, I ended up doing some outsourcing. So I'm getting a little bit of help with editing um, and I am getting a little bit of help with admin as well because it's just not possible for me to put in all those hours with client work um, as well as stay on top of all the sort of behind the scenes for the business. So that was something that I hadn't anticipated. Um, obviously, none of us knew that we were going to be in a 18 month uh, pandemic on and off lockdowns. Um, so that was something that, you know, things happen that you can't plan for, whether it's physical stuff with the pregnancy, a baby could come much earlier than planned. Um, one of the uh, female business owners that I know ended up having her baby at 30 weeks. She came super premature. So that was obviously not planned. Um, and things like uh, a bigger workload than you had planned, despite best intentions and the best planning these things happen and you have to just adapt when they come up so I guess long story short here is great to have a plan in place to think ahead about how long you can work for and how long you can keep up your regular workload for but um be prepared that things can come up whether it's to do with the pregnancy itself baby's arrival or just the world around you and um guess being willing to adapt and having a little bit of a backup plan in place can make a huge difference um, as well as outsourcing. So having those connections that if you do feel like you're falling behind or you need a little bit of extra help, whether it's colleagues within your industry or those with sort of complementary skill sets that can help you stay on top of things can make a world of difference. Um, I don't know what I would have done without my virtual assistants um, or without my uh, fellow photographers over the past few months they have um, been invaluable and I think that's just another argument of why networking is so important and why it's so important to kind of immerse yourself in a community of um, other fellow small business owners as well. Something else to mention here I guess alongside the planning is how it works with um, with regards to money, everybody's favorite topic. <laughs> so when you work in a, uh, I guess, sort of more traditional career or a nine to five job, when you work for a bigger company, um, I think maternity leave and pay is a little bit more straightforward. Um, when you are self-employed, you can apply for a maternity allowance um, which is a little bit of a different process, but there is some support in place, which is brilliant. Um, you can start it from a certain point in your pregnancy, and I think you have to start it within a couple of weeks of baby actually being born. So that gives a little bit of financial support, but for most people, it's not going to be anywhere near what they would normally pay themselves. Um, so that adds another challenge as well. It's trying to plan ahead for for your maternity leave and maybe you are able to save up a little bit of money um everybody i guess is in a different situation and has a different way of doing things but that was one benefit of me being so busy over the last few months i was able to put a little bit of money away in my business account to help sort of supplement maternity allowance while i take a break um, it is quite a challenging part of self-employment i think um financially it's always going to be a little bit more challenging. You all know how it works. We don't really have paid holidays. These are all things that you kind of have to plan and prepare for. Um, and again, the second time around, this was a little bit easier for me because I have grown my businesses where as they were um, very much in the kind of startup phase while well, I was only running the one business and it was very much in the startup phase back then and um, this time I'm a little bit more established and because the last few months have been so busy one of the silver linings is that I was able to put a little bit of money away um, and you know be a little bit less worried financially going into um, maternity leave. 
Right, so next up, you plan your leave, you know when you're going to start your leave, and if things go as planned, you start on schedule, but how long can you actually take off from your business? So maternity allowance gives you nine months, I believe, 